Hello, my name is Christopher Anatra. You know me as the Quantum Businessman. Today, the Quantum Businessman is going to explain how a traditional quantum computer works in just a few minutes. Ready? Let's go. Wait, this is a bit much. The answer can be summarized into four parts. The first is vibration. The second is timelines. The third is qubits. And the fourth is superposition, or what's known as quantum entanglement. The first part of the answer is vibration. The fabric of the universe is constantly vibrating. Everything is composed of atoms, and atoms are in constant motion. Even objects that appear still, solid, and unmoving are vibrating at the molecular level. To operate a quantum computer must have no vibration. They need special built floor structures that have protections to eliminate any type of vibration from the outside world. Any slight vibration will cause the quantum computer to exit the quantum state and stop working. The special built structure of a quantum computer must also regulate its temperature down to one Kelvin, which is near absolute zero, colder than outer space. The second part of the answer is the concept of timelines. It's related to the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics known as the Everett interpretation, which implies that there are many parallel, non-interacting worlds. Perhaps you could call these parallel universes within a multiverse of possibilities. Perhaps each of these parallel universes is created from infinite branching timelines. Timelines all vibrating at different rates. You could think of these timelines like how a video feedback loop is created when a video camera is pointed at a monitor. Timelines could be thought of as the digital version of the optical effect of looking in a mirror placed between two mirrors. This scene from the movie Inception illustrates this mirror optical effect showing the concept of timelines. Why are timelines important? Because in theory, at least one of those timelines has the solution to the problem the quantum computer is tasked to solve. You just need to find it. The third part of the answer is the qubit, or the quantum bit. The qubit is the secret sauce for how a quantum computer works. Here's a secret recipe. Qubits within a quantum computer go into a quantum state. They vibrate. They quantum oscillate into other timelines. The more qubits a quantum computer has, the more resources it has to solve a problem. Each time you add a qubit, you double the number of these timelines you have access to. A two qubit quantum computer would have access to two to the second power, which is two times two or four timelines. A 10 qubit quantum computer would have access to two to the 10th power, which is 1024 timelines. A 500 qubit quantum computer would have access to two to the 500th power timelines. That's a huge number. If we call every mirror image timeline of Leonardo DiCaprio a Leonardo, then a 500 qubit quantum computer would be able to access three quantillion, 428 quadrillion, 236 trillion, 669 billion, blah, 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 Leonardo's or timelines. The fourth and final part of the answer is what is known as superposition or quantum entanglement. Remember all those duplicate optical images in a video feedback or mirror loop? Consider that each image may represent a timeline or parallel universe or a Leonardo. That's my technical term, LOL. For short, we can call a Leonardo a LEO, L-E-O, which would be an acronym for Linear Energy Oscillation. So a LEO would represent the vibration oscillation that separates each timeline. So if another timeline holds the solution to a problem, 
we can measure that timeline distance in LEOs. For example, we could say that a quantum computer found the solution to an equation at eight quadrillion LEOs distance from our current timeline. Now, imagine that same quantum computer in every mirror image merging with itself throughout the multiverse of timeline possibilities. Quantillions of them or more all inside that one quantum computer. They may look similar, but are different depending on different decisions made along the way or timelines that split after a nexus point decision. And at least one of those timelines includes the solution to the problem to be solved by the quantum computer. Now, let's put this all together. A 500 qubit quantum computer works by entangling itself with quintillions of copies of itself in infinite timelines. These parallel worlds overlap with ours. The qubits allow this to happen. And depending on how many qubits the quantum computer has, that dictates the number of timelines or LEO distances it vibrates into. They don't calculate, they discover. They take advantage of. They exploit the answer from another timeline that has already solved the problem. Can't be, but somehow is. Note that this explanation is based on how a traditional quantum computer works. New quantum computer technology, such as announced by Microsoft and its Majorna qubit technology, uses material that can create an entirely new state of matter. Not a solid, not a liquid, not a gas, but what's called a topological state, which form time crystals, a new form of matter. Therefore, they don't need the special vibration-free enclosure or the absolute zero temperature and can hold millions of qubits. Quantum computer with millions of qubits provides us with an astronomical amount of timelines to vibrate into. The human body contains crystals, primarily in our bones, our teeth, our inner ear and pineal gland. Is it possible that you can become quantum? Is it possible that you can vibrate into other timelines using these crystals in your body, especially in your pineal gland, like time crystals in a modern quantum computer? When you begin to grasp these concepts, you begin to realize how Mandela effects work. I believe that the way a quantum computer works also proves and verifies how Mandela effects work. What are Mandela effects? Mandela effects are hints and wonderful surprises that we have vibrated into a new timeline. We are quantum. To go a bit further into this concept of becoming quantum, a key aspect is a structure around our spirit body called the light body. To review from my past presentations, the spirit body is the spherical area in arm's distance all around us. This is what Leonardo da Vinci was illustrating in his Vitruvian Man drawing. The circle is really a sphere in 3D, and it represents the spirit body structure. The square, really a cube in 3D, represents us being locked in time. It's within this spirit body that our avatar is rendered by our DNA. Outside of the spirit body is the light body structure. The light body is the real you. It's quantum, and it knows all our other timelines and parallel realities. The goal is to merge our light body into our spirit body, and then through our heart to merge into our avatar. Once this happens, we become more powerful and limitless than any quantum computer. We switch from accessing data from our brain or local storage to gaining infinite quantum knowledge, which we stream and is always on. So there you go. How a quantum computer really works. Vibration, timelines, qubits, and quantum entanglement. Can't be, but somehow is. Until our paths cross again, perhaps only one Leo away, sending you my love. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream until your dreams come true.